Hey you guys, good to see you as always here on the channel. Hope everybody's doing fantastic. We've got a beautiful spring day today and I'm walking up here to a future project to meet with the Aiken Electric co-op guy because I think I may have a little situation. So we're down here at a, a garden area. In fact, my dad's over there working in the garden right now. And all out here in front of you, uh, I wanna build a shade structure where I can grow plants for sale down at Grassroots uh, Garden Center. But as I was laying it out and planning it, you know, I noticed these power lines running right across the middle of the field. And I don't know how that's gonna interfere with my shade structure. So I'm gonna put a greenhouse over there where that little shed is. And then this will just be metal poles and shade cloth, obviously with sprinklers all out here. And this will allow me to grow a lot of my own plants for sale down at the nursery. So I called the guy with the power company. He's like, yeah, we'll move them, but you gotta pay for it. Which kind of rubs me the wrong way just because I spend so much money with Aiken Electric. Either at Atomic Sand, here, it's thousands of dollars a month. So you think they would throw you a bone but anyway, he's gonna come out here and take a look at it and we'll see what he's got to say. And then Aaron and the guys, Aaron and Mark and Brandon are doing a little barbecue up at the landfill for the, for the guys. So we're gonna go up there. Then we got a meeting at two. It's a busy day, but it's a beautiful day. Let's see what the Aiken Electric guys got to say. How you doing? Howdy. Busy man. Yes, sir. Good to see you. <laughs> Good to see you. I think we met down there. Don't you have the sand pit too down there on Atomic Road? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I used to work out of our Aiken office. Okay. And, and I think I met you down there one time. I think you was trying to get power up there to the um oh to your little your little way station thing or whatever. And then it was like Dominion was coming in from it's the front. Or so. yeah, it is there. all messed up down there. I'm like, what in the world? The former owners had, uh, I guess, had a I don't know if it was a lawsuit or what with Aiken Electric. Right. And then they brought in Dominion. But now right. I still have both. Uh, yeah, it's that's kind of a messed up. That situation. is messed up down there. I don't yeah, know what happened. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, so that's, we, we that's got crazy. Aiken Electric out yonder too, and then here. Yeah. On this site that powers this, this I got sand you. plant and okay. well the whole property really. I got you. Well, Kyle, I know you're busy. I won't take much of your time, but so I've got a garden center also. Okay. Right down on Bettis Academy Road. Okay, I got you. And what I'm wanting to do is grow some plants, you know, that I can resell. Right. Down there at the garden center. Okay. So I've got water right down there at the okay. pond. Okay, right. And I've got the power stanchion okay. right there, so I'm probably just gonna have to put a transformer. Because okay. what I'm gonna do is okay. put a greenhouse over there where that little shed is. Okay. And then this whole area out here. Right. I'm gonna have probably 12 to 15 feet I'm not okay. exactly sure yet. Right. Of um, a cable shade system. These lines running across here, and I said, "Well, I better at least call." Right. And because I don't know protocol, I didn't know right. my shade structure is going to interfere with y'all. You know, having to be out be out here and work on the lines right. or what have and, you. So. And, and that's what I was going to say. As long as if you think we could get in here and work like let's just say we need to change that pole out one day yeah if you think you could make it to where i don't know like maybe pull them back or something like that just in order for us to drive in our big trucks in okay. here to get to that pole to then change it out okay then, then yeah that that would be fine right is. and 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 you also got to think too now let's say if one of these wires get a bad spot in it let's say that wire just breaks one day right you know if it falls down on it then obviously we're going to have to be able to get to that area, you know, to pick it back up and then put a splice in there. Yeah. Um, so you were saying y'all have a 20 foot. Right. We, so, so, so it, it, it says we have a 20 foot right away. That's 10 feet on, on each side of the line. Okay. So even this line, like right here, that's running right. this way is still a 20 foot on that 20 or 10 feet on each side. Yeah. But that's mainly just so as long as we can still get there to maintain it. So, so same thing here, like let's say, let's say a tree falls on the line over there and breaks that wire. And if this wire just falls down on whatever you got here, yeah. as long as we can get, get in here to access it and then to pick it back it, up yeah. and to fix it, then we're okay with that. 
Okay. Because it's like you said, it, yes, it is your land, right. but but since the power's already there, we I, need to, you know, we you need to be able, able to access it. it. I, right, I get right. That. Okay, as you may or may not heard there, I wore my mic out there just to kind of bring you guys along on the conversation. But real nice fella with Aiken Electric. And what we're gonna have to do is just respect the right of way of this line that goes over to my grandfather's old house and then this big main three-phase line and fiber optic cable. So we're just gonna have to redo the layout a little bit just to um, allow them access to get in to, in case they have to pull a new line or replace these poles or what have you. So a little bit of redesign, but it's not the end of the world. And I don't wanna spend 20 grand rerouting the lines or burying it or what have you. So I think the simplest thing is just to redo the layout, move my garden beds or whatever you wanna call them, move the shade structure around a little bit. So I'll keep you guys posted. I'd like to get started on this thing uh, as soon as possible, but with everything happening right now, who knows when that'll be. Let's go up to the landfill now and see if they got the barbecue grill going and see if we can't get us a free hamburger. And before we head up there, if you heard me and the electric guy talking about the pollen, it's pollen season and everything is going to be yellow soon. And I don't know if y'all can see it, but it kind of looks hazy back in that direction. If I stand still, you might be able to see it, but that's just all pollen moving from all these pine trees. They are loaded down with pollen right now. Just like that right there. Oh my God, it's so thick, you can almost taste it. That's just how it is every spring here with all these pine trees. They are letting loose right now. But before we go up to check on the barbecue, I wanted to show you guys something with the lumber. Um, we were talking, a lot of you guys were commenting about the logs that we were feeding through the roto chopper. Why don't you have those sawn up? So I'm gonna show you what dad does with them right here. So for those of you that are asking about the logs we were feeding through the roto chopper, we do take a lot of the big, pretty logs, whether it be pine or oak or what have you, and have it sawn up. Now dad has got a stack after stack of these beautiful, nice, boards down here so we don't waste everything or we don't grind everything jesus is down here doing a little cleanup this morning getting these uh restacked because i think dad took some more logs to my my cousin's sawmill which i'm going to take y'all up to one day i promise it's a really neat operation it's just right up the road so all of the real pretty logs that come in especially if it's cedar or hickory something like that We'll stockpile it to the side, take it up to the sawmill, but Dad has got stack after stack after stack. Even over there in that little shed too, he's got a bunch stacked up. So we don't waste the, uh, we don't waste all of it. Not that it's a waste going to the mulch process anyway, but just thought I'd show you guys that real quick for those of you who were asking about timber logs. Oh, they're looking good, Mark. Mark is our barbecue guru around here. Boston butt. Hamburgers, chicken. We don't use this drill a bunch, ain't we, buddy? Yeah, well, we have. Just cooking it up. So we're doing, um, what is it, 40, I think 40 burgers, 40 hot dogs. And I don't know what happened by the time we left the garden area down there. Rain started coming down, but that's going to be good to knock some of this pollen that we saw a while ago down. That pollen was dropping like crazy. Aaron, spell Worcestershire. <laughs> Without looking at the bottle. I probably should let that peanut on my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would have gave you an excuse. Yeah. Worcestershire sauce. I could just about drink that stuff, man. I love Worcestershire. Worcestershire soy. work you guys that was a good hamburger hot dog hopefully i don't have ketchup or mustard all over my face but oh well we had a nice little rain come down and help uh help with dust control but now we got a little sloppy mess but 
it wasn't too bad i guess we probably only had maybe an eighth of an inch probably come down just enough to turn the dust into this slippery mess that we got right here but let's walk around the landfill a little bit see what's happening i haven't been up here in a couple of days i want to see how we're progressing on this lift and we got somebody stuck So we got the city in here right now and they just got a little bit stuck because he just got the single axle. And the reason that the city's in here today is the county landfill evidently caught on fire yesterday or the day before. And so they've got a big fire over there. I guess they shut down their operations. So we'll be even busier here today. And that's just kind of the way it, way it happens. If one landfill shuts down for whatever reason, the trash has got to go somewhere. So we'll be extra extra busy today but kind of ironic there's <laughs> a little bit of irony in this right here but i guess these yard cans missing a wheel or have gotten bent up banged up so they've been collecting trash their whole life and now they're going to end up in the trash i was looking to see if any of them might be decent enough just to use for trash cans around the house but they're all pretty pretty banged up so kind of sad you know <laughs> like i said they spend their whole life collecting trash and then they wind up with the trash eventually but let's go see what we got coming in today we've got some of our most hated trash material right here these mattresses those springs and stuff love to get wrapped up on the tracks Look like somebody got rid of their their outdoor above ground pool now i see something that we can't have in the trash even though i'm sure it's empty but we can't have any containers that could have possibly ever contained petroleum and marco would have got this i'm sure but he's over there helping that guy get unstuck so we're gonna help him out set this over here he can collect it. this stuff like this goes in one of the dumpsters over there on the side and then that'll have to go to a municipal landfill and we got anderson and the volvo haul truck today go ahead and stacking some cover up like i showed you guys on the last landfill update video we're just steadily working this lift on out towards uh the, where the trucks are dumping now and then we'll get back up on top and do it all over again just keep stacking the trash and working it on out mike's back from the little cookout we had so he's gonna jump in the 826 c marco's coming to get the gas container we'll go ahead and throw it in the bucket for him Antonio's on the dozer right now, but he's going more than likely. We kind of, when we had these little cookouts, which uh, was really nice of Aaron and Mark to put that on for the guys, but when we have these little cookouts, we kind of have to take turns. We can't shut down operations because the trucks just never stop. So they'll take turns going down there and eating, come back and getting to work. So Mike's back on the 826C. David's back in the uh, Hyundai 160 Magnet. And probably here in a second. Hey, I think I see Antonio going down the hill now, so he might be going to get him a burger. So a lot of the same old stuff up here, guys. A lot of wood, a lot of plastics, some concrete I see, packaging material, another mattress, lots of cardboard, super sacks, all kinds of stuff up here, y'all.
material. They're trying to build up the top of this lift right now, so he'll take it up there, blade it off a little bit, and then Mike will take the compactor and just walk it in. That's all Mike will do is stay up there. Antonio will take care of the floor, keeping the loads pushed actively up to the working face where the compactor will then just, uh, like I said, just roll over it as many times as it can before the next pile of trash gets pushed on it. Just compaction is the name of the game like we've discussed many times before. And David's got some aluminum right here. As you guys were asking, you know, what we do with the, the non-ferrous material, you know, the stuff that the magnet won't grab. So we just have to do all that kind of by hand. So he'll put it over here to the side. Marco will come with the cat uh, backhoe, grab it, take it over. Then we'll have to sort it out by hand. When trucks, uh, you know, aren't needing help, which is <laughs> lately, and especially since the county caught on fire, not gonna be a lot of downtime or free time today. some kind of big old crates that that one truck just brought in and I'm gonna back up just a little bit because Antonio is wide open he's got to be because the truck just continuously rolling in here Marco, it's busy today, my friend. That's what I heard. Yeah, they caught on fire. So yeah. you, you're going to be real busy today, buddy. Uh, you, can, you can handle it. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, you, you can, you'll sleep good tonight for sure. Got some kind of huge industrial pallets right here. But Marco will go through and inspect every load that gets dumped up here on the tipping floor just for things like that uh that gas can that we found a while ago any kind of petroleum household waste 
anything that we shouldn't shouldn't be burying i gotta run i got a conference call here in a few minutes guys appreciate you hanging out with me on this video and all the videos that you do and i'll see you on the next one